and we have a force field. Unless saved, each hero within one area suffers one HP and cannot move until the next time phase. Well, I kept all the hero heroes too close together. They're all within one area, area, area so they're all going to have to save. Fortunately for Icarus, he automatically will save, so we don't even have to worry about him. Um, Ariel will have to roll a, a hit here, hopefully. Maybe? Let's see. A hit! That means she does not lose one HP and she can move. Oh my goodness. And then um, Thorgar has to roll a star. If I could roll the die in the dice tray. There's a star! Oh my gosh. These traps have been so ineffective. Thank goodness. So we'll remove this. Now there's a total of three of these treasure tokens and I have to randomly draw one. So I'm gonna pick, I don't know, here, let me, I don't, I don't even know what's on the bottom side. I have never gotten a treasure before. So let me just shuffle these up a little bit and then we'll grab this one. Okay, cool, we get a treasure card. And our treasure card is, oh, discard soul shard to gain five shards or discard two soul shards to gain one soul rank. <gasps> That's amazing! We'll place that in our backpack and decide what to do with that later. <laughs> Actually, I don't know why I would wait till later. I'm gonna use this right now. I'm gonna discard two soul shards, which I have right here, to gain one soul rank. So guess what? Ariel just leveled up. Oh, awesome. Going to level two means that now she has a whopping five health and she can get one new talent that is from the basic talent cards for additional powers. Let's see what we want. We're gonna give her this merchant ability. Once per quest, when you visit the Emporium, your first pot purchase costs less, depending on what you have. That way we can maybe get something awesome for her because she's the one who has all the money anyways. So now the question becomes, does she wanna jump into the fray? If she does, she only has, well, she has four health now. That's still not great at all, but she can reroll. <sighs> Come on, what's life without a little bit of risk, right? <laughs> so she has done her action already, but she can still move into here. Oops. And then what she's going to do is she's going to attack this red gremlin because that's who we need to defeat. She's going to use her staff, so she's going to roll three blue dice. And hoping to goodness she gets one lightning bolt or one star. Ooh, wait a second. I think I can guarantee a star. You better believe we can. Before any hit or defense roll, you can choose to roll one die less to obtain an extra star result. So we're guaranteed one star, and we're going to roll two blue dice for this staff. Come on, let's do something. Maybe two points of damage. Maybe an area of attack. I don't know, let's see what we get. Okay, totally useless. <laughs> That's a bummer. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna also use this arcane robe. Once per round, reroll one hit or defense die. So we're gonna reroll this die. Come on. Oh yeah! All right, turns out we did not need to worry about the um, the stars, but that's okay. So we have a total of three stars, <laughs> but we're bashing for two damage. And we're gonna bash, so we're gonna push him out of the room so he's not gonna have all of us suffer damage. He has three points of damage on him right now. He has one armor and he gets to roll one die to see if he prevents the damage from the staff. And that's a fail. That was totally this, sorry. That face, the gremlin, I don't know, it should be something for him, really, because he is a gremlin, but it's not. He fails, so he's now at four damage, and he, get, he gets bashed out of the room. Let's push him back into here. <laughs> yeah. Now we draw our enemy activation card. We get Elite Assault. Activate all red enemies. Oh, perfect. We have just one red enemy. This gremlin's going to jump back into this room, and he would normally attack, I think... Ariel, no, actually he would attack Thorgar with only two health, but we're going to have Icarus use his taunt, bring it, and have him have the red gremlin attack Icarus. Once again, it's three on four, so we actually still have the majority, so it's going to be the regular three dice for the claws attack. Come on, misses. One, two, three, four, five. 
No, yeah, that's that's not misses. That's five damage. Oh, <laughs> fortunately, Icarus still has one shield, so that's four points of damage, and he can roll three red or green or blue, whatever color this is, blue dice. One shield. That's it. Icarus is going to take three points of damage then, because there's five total minus two. That moves him to having five damage out of eight in total. Oh, he only has three left. Can we do this? I don't know. It's going to be close. Well, now it's the event phase. So first we have to see if that red uh, gremlin attacks again. Yes, that's a shield. Does not activate. Whew. And let's move on to the next event. If I can flip the card. Divine Gift. Based on the active, active hero's soul, we're all um, true heroes. One hero heals one HP. Oh, bananas. That means Icarus can go down to four. Oh, that's a ten. Can go down to four damage. I don't have one of those. Which is awesome. And then remember, we're going to go to the time phase. He's actually going to heal because of that troll's ring. Down to only three points of damage. Oh my gosh, that could not have come at a better time. Icarus will move back down to only three damage. And this talent will go down to one time before it refreshes. Ariel here can use that one time and refresh her Ice Manipulator, which is great because this can do a lot of damage. I think we can end it here. Let's use Thorgar with his hammer, focusing an attack on the Gremlin, the Red Gremlin, to beat him. So we have one guaranteed success because we are focusing. We get to roll two red and two blue. Come on, I want to see lots of hits, lots of hits. Okay, one, two, three, four hits. Only one lightning bolt. I'm going to use this card, the Divine Aid, to re-roll this die. Come on, lightning bolt. Oh, well, that's another hit. One, two, three, four, five hits. Yeah, five hits, that's awesome. Let's see what this gremlin can do. I think actually the gremlin is almost guaranteed dead because we've got one armor here that's four hits even if he gets two successes here that's two hits two hits plus four is six enough to beat him but we'll roll the two just for fun yeah one shield totally gone he does do one damage to each hero but no hero would be dead because of that although um thorgar would be one away from dying we have now defeated the red gremlin we get to obtain two soul shards for that and two random loot tokens. This one and this one. And let's just reveal these. We get another treasure and we get 10 more crowns. Awesome. So 10 crowns and our treasure. I'll just draw randomly from there. Ooh, gain 25 more crowns. And then, cool, discard it. So 25 more. 10 25. Ooh, that's actually really nice. We needed some money. With his last breath, High Cleric Claudius tells the tale of the mysterious death of the king. His body appeared strangely light and pale as he lay dead, and to make matters worse, the royal heir has also disappeared. He continues weakly. Darkness invaded these lands. Count Delve and his guards fight in vain because the evil forces they are facing are not of this world. You are now our only hope. The ritual required the sacrifice of our most precious relic. But here you stand, your souls contained in the gems you carry, bound to the will of the spell. You cannot completely die, but neither shall you be completely free, until you will defeat this evil. I am ashamed of this coercion, but to save the realm, I choose to curse my soul. The spell of recall will give you back your strength as you kill the evil forces while gu guiding you closer and closer to your aim. My life is over now, but I pass away knowing my destiny is accomplished. Now everything depends on you. The cleric Marcus will guide you. He will answer your questions. Farewell, heroes. Save this realm. We get a reward of the party gains 50 crowns, in addition to each faith hero gains one healing potion from the Emporium. And then we move to the next quest. 50 crowns? Sweet! Oh wow, you guys. I hope you had as much fun as I did. That was intense. 
What a great fight. I mean, this is just the prologue, right? It just makes me think, what is it going to be like <laughs> when we move through this story together? It is going to be awesome. I am going to have to rely so much on my chip theory dice tray. <laughs> hey, it didn't let me down most of the time. There was a couple times it did. But I'm going to be honest, I rolled pretty well in this one. What do I think of this game? Oh my goodness, it's hard to say. I've only played it three, four, four times now. One, two, three, four. Yep, so I'm doing my own campaign with my family. So we've just finished Prologue 1. We didn't get the treasure like we did here, so that was cool to, to see what that was. Um, but I think I need to play it more to really give you good feedback. But I'll tell you this, it is enjoyable. Now, with four people, so we're playing with four people, the game gets a little bit long. I mean, even with three, it can get long. So if you have, if you have enough time, it's great. Um, just watch on how much time you have because <laughs> it can take you a while, especially with those enemies and trying to count, okay, minus one because of the night, plus one because of this, minus one because of that. Oh, I'm focusing, so that gives me plus one. Oh, but they've got a slash um, resistance, you know. <laughs> Anyways, that can take you a while. But all I have played is the prologue, so it's hard for me to give you the full picture. I know one of the biggest questions is going to be, well, what is this like compared to Gloomhaven? Now, I've played Gloomhaven 27 times, you guys, so I can't compare them yet. I have to play this more. I will say that I do enjoy the diceless uh, fighting in Gloomhaven, but there's something about this game and, and these dice that really, it's actually way more enjoyable than I thought it would be. And I think it's because of all the different icons that you can get and that they're 10-sided. And... I know it sounds weird, but it gives you almost that response deck Gloomhaven feel a little bit. The only problem is, is as we go through the campaign, I'm not going to be able to level up the dice like I can level up the uh, response deck in Gloomhaven. So there's that. So we'll just kind of see, and, and as we go through the campaign once a month, we'll revisit what we think about this game. But I'm going to tell you, Fun is definitely high on this, and the quality of the components, the miniatures look fantastic. If only I could paint, oh, and these real coins, I love it. You know, Gloomhaven, you're using cardboard for everything, which is fine, but I will say you get a little bit more of a real feel with this game, just because of all of the nice bling, so to speak. But yeah, what happens next is I'm gonna go to the Emporium before Quest 2, but I think I'm gonna do that at the beginning of the next video. So when we start Quest 2 in the month of August, I'll start with the Emporium, purchasing cards, and then we'll move from there. Because I'm tired and I'm ready to be done for tonight. <laughs> and that way I'll be fresh for the Emporium and I'll make good choices. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you think. I know I made that huge error of missing the fire, but if there's anything else that I missed, let me know. I'm sure I did. It's There's a lot to keep track of. So let me know in the comments, and thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.